how have you guys all been? Today is Friday, April 22nd, and I am back for my stitching update. It's been the usual two weeks since my last one, so I hope you guys have all been well and you've been stitching, making, and creating all of the things. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast where I talk about my cross stitching as well as my quilting. However, if quilting is not something you're interested in seeing or hearing about, I show it a little bit later on in the video and I let you know in plenty of time that they'll be making their appearance so that that way you can go on to the next floss tube video. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So I hope you guys had a great two weeks since we last sat down to chat. Uh, I do want to take a minute to thank all of you guys who stopped by two weeks ago to watch my video. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend it with me. I really do appreciate it so much. I want to say thank you to everyone who left me such kind comments. Um, I have read through all of them. A lot of you guys had questions about the frames that I made and I have compiled all of them down and I will answer them a little bit later on in the video. I do have some brand new framed pieces to show so I figure I will show them and then we'll talk about some of those framing questions that you guys had. Um, there is a new quilt hanging up behind me. Um, it is called the Temecula Album Quilt by Temecula Quilt Company. And if you watched my last video all the way through to the quilting section of the video, I did have the quilt top assembled and then I was able to quilt it over these past two weeks and now it hangs up behind me. I absolutely love it. The seasonal tree, once again, is mostly naked. I did take down all of my Easter decorations the other day. This time of the year, it's kind of in flux. Uh, I don't really um, decorate for spring anymore. I used to, um, but I've kind of scaled back all of that and definitely stick to more of like prim decor. So the tree for now will be a little bit uh, naked, but I do have plans for it. And I am hoping to begin working on that very soon so that that way it won't be so naked. <laughs> So over these past two weeks, I did watch a brand new floss tuber. Uh, she is an Instagram friend of mine who just decided to bite the bullet and start making floss tube videos. And I'm really, really glad that she did. Uh, she lives up in Washington state. So we are kind of neighbors because I live in Oregon. And I do hope someday that I will get to meet her in person. But her name is Teresa and her YouTube channel name is Strictly Stitchy. And I believe that is also what her Instagram handle is as well. Um, I did not write that part down. I probably should have, but I will put a link to Teresa's floss tube channel and her Instagram down in the description box. But I really did enjoy the time that I spent with her. I cannot wait for her next floss tube video. And when she gave me a shout out in her video, she called me one cool chick, which I definitely chuckled at that. I even paused the video and went and told my husband that she had said that because in my whole entire life, nobody has ever said that about me. So that was really fun to hear. <laughs> So before I move on and share what I've been working on over the past two weeks, I did have one question that was related to my stitching rotation that I wanted to talk about. Um, it was a, I've actually had this question asked several times over the past couple of videos, and it's the one thing I forget to talk about. And that is, can I talk a little bit about what my stitching rotation is? Like, how do I, how do I do it basically? Um, so, how I do my stitching rotation is imagine a two week period. You've got 14 days of stitching. Um, I stitch in the evenings when I go to bed. And so I typically stitch between nine and 11 PM. Um, I don't always start at nine o'clock. Sometimes it fluctuates between nine and 9.30. Just kind of depends on what's going on. But on average, I do start about nine o'clock and I stitch for two hours. Um, you can get quite a bit accomplished in those two hours unless there's like a really good show that steals your attention away and then before you know it, you've only put in 10 stitches. <laughs> um, so how I, I was trying to think of a really good way to explain it and um, I thought I'll just do it in the two week block. Uh, so you have 14 days. So days one through five, 
I will have, let's say the winter is past. So I will work on the winter has, or the winter is past for days one through five. And then on days six through seven has been my autumn at Hawker and Hollow that I have been working on. So that will get two days. Then days eight to 12 will be five days spent on another project. Um, in this instance, it was Ann Thomas. So I worked on her for five days. And then on days 13 and 14, I went back to Autumn Hawker and Hollow. What usually ends the 14 days is my video. So tonight I will start working on something. I haven't quite decided what it is um, yet. On my calendar, it does say to work on Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain, but I don't know how long editing this video would take. So it could be that I will just work on Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow for tonight and then move on to Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. Usually, it's it just kind of depends on how the video goes. So this particular Friday being day one, uh, it usually, it might not be five full days of working on my stitching. Um, I do like rotation. I feel like I get quite a lot accomplished. Everything that I'm working on is something that I do want in my rotation, uh, which that is key to always be working on something that you want to be working on because if you're working on something that you absolutely hate, you're just, you're not going to enjoy it and it's going to end up stuck in your whip basket forever. So definitely everything that I'm working on it's because I want to work on it and I enjoy working on it um, what I did was I grabbed my book of days and I thought I would show you what my April looks like so this is what my April looks like and this is showing everything that I have stitched on and everything that I'm going to be stitched on I write everything in pencil unless I forgot to write down a day and then I, you know, pin or, or what have you. But I usually write everything in pencil because I do change my mind and I move stuff around. So tonight I will be starting Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. I did not grab it to show in this video. So if I do decide, because I'm still on the fence, if I want to work on it or if I want to work on something else, um, I will have that to show in my next video. So. That is kind of how my rotation goes. Um, I hope it's not too confusing. In my head, it always sounds really good and then until I start you know, talking about it and then I, I just feel like I'm tripping over my words. Um, Yvette actually helped me fine tune my rotation and I have been doing it for a while. I mean, it's been quite a while. I really like the five days with um, the two days in between. Um, before the new year started, those two days were our autumn Wednesday where we worked on an autumn piece. And we both had um, Hawker and Hollows in our stash. I had autumn, I think she had village or has village. And so we've been working on that instead. And it's been really nice to like get some progress on that. And the hope is we'll be able to finish both of our Hawk runs um, this year. <laughs> I did have a finish over these past two weeks. Uh, the Winter is Past by Blackbird Designs is my brand new finish. And I'm so very happy to have this one done. It was an absolute pleasure to work on. I love the colors. I love the linen. I just love everything about this piece. So here it is. I stitched this on a piece of a 36 count oaken with the called for Weeks Dye Works 1 over 2. And I just love how the colors play together. It's all those beautiful earth tones, the greens, the grays, the browns, the blues. I just really, really loved how they all just played together. It's such a beautiful piece. Uh, the only thing that I left off was in the two side borders that are the vines, there are little doodads, just like one little stitch here and there of different colors. And I decided not to do that. I didn't really feel like they were necessary. And you honestly can't even tell that they're missing, except that I told you. <laughs> but I really, really love it. I, I remember when I first started it, I was not sure how well it would do on this piece of oaken, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And the good news, I have quite a bit left over that I will be able to use it for something else. 
So I love this one. Uh, I did have two frames that I thought might possibly work for it. However, they are just a little bit too small. So I'm hoping maybe tomorrow to go to the Goodwill and see if they've gotten any new wood frames so that, that way I can make a frame for it and then hopefully have it a finish, like a fully finish in my next video. This particular sampler will be one that will hang in my bedroom, which I have started hanging up some of the samplers in my room. Uh, there is one wall that I'm still not sure yet what to do. It's just kind of a blank canvas and I'm hoping to, you know, maybe even if it's temporary, just kind of finding some stuff to put on it. And then that way I can do a bedroom tour because I know a lot of you guys have asked me. Uh, next up is Early Workings, Fractured Tulips by Tina Waltman. So this one is one that I have been working on off and on over the last four weeks, I guess. It is my morning stitch and haven't got too much farther than I did in my last video. Uh, this one just kind of gets shuffled around. Uh, I usually, if I need to work on other stuff, I usually do that in the morning. So I've just sporadically been working on this one. I'm actually really tempted to, all I have left to do are the little flowers. And then there's, there's like um, some that you put up in here that I haven't done yet. But I'm actually tempted just when I get to this part to leave it. I have a frame that I feel like would be perfect for this. And it's something that I could put in, on that blank wall um, because I was thinking of kind of a collage of different framed pieces and other things. And I feel like this one would be perfect there. Uh, and at some, if I do decide to do that, at some point I will stitch the whole pillow and put it in the trench bowl. But I, I'm kind of leaning that way as I was stitching on it. I really just kind of like the tulip by itself. So we'll see what I decide to do. Um, I am stitching it on a piece of 36 count mellow with the called for DMC one over two. And again, it's all those beautiful earth tones that I just love. So we'll see what I decide to do. I keep going back and forth because I do, I do like it all together. I like how it has that 18, oh, what is it, two, 1802. With, I just, I like how it looks. So we'll see. It could be at some point I might restitch it for the trench bowl, but again, I have not decided. <laughs> All right, my next project is Ann Thomas 1854 by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. I'm doing this bird motif with the flowers around it. Okay. So I have to tell you that um, I worked on this for five days and they were very frustrating five days uh, because I was in the section where it is the, the wing and the tail and within that section there is DMC 310 and then there's another DMC color. I want to say it's like 898 or one of those. It's a really dark black brown. And it's supposed to help with the shading and all of that. Well, the symbols on the chart, even though the symbol, you know, like one is a, you know, let's say one is a star and one is an exclamation point, the color of the symbols is exactly the same. And it's really hard to see where they need to go because there's no like definition between the two of them. So you're looking at it and you're counting and it just becomes really confusing. And I ended up adding and not adding and just it just seemed like I was constantly ripping my threads out, restitching only to find another section where it was stitched wrong. So then I would come in at a different angle and try to approach that section only to find out the one I had stitched previously was in the wrong spot. It just, it was really, really difficult. Um, and because I have a booklet, there's no black and white key in here. It's all, it's all color. So those two colors together, it was just really, really hard to, to tell them apart, I guess. So I spent a lot of time ripping my threads out, restitching. And at one point I finally just got to where I was like, I just need to make it look right even if it means that I'm putting colors where they don't go because I had been at it for, at that time, four days. It was four days of me constantly ripping out 
the black and then the black brown. So I finally got the tail in. I finally got the wing how it was supposed, you know, like the definition of the wing. I do have some that I have to go in and fill in, but it's not, um, it's with lighter color, so it will be easier to see. Some I will have to fudge, but this is where I ended up. So definitely very frustrating. Um, I, I was actually kind of miffed that the five days were over because I really did not feel like I had gotten very far. Um, I am stitching this on a piece of 40 count Dusty Road by Seraphim Fabrics with the DMC conversion that is listed in the chart, one over two. I mean, he's a beautiful bird. I honestly don't think it's gonna matter when the whole thing is together. I don't think somebody standing there is gonna notice that I have a DMC 310 in the wrong spot. I mean, I, I suppose there's somebody that could, but I don't think anybody will be able to. So my plan is to return to this hopefully within the next two weeks because I do want to try to get it finished um, relatively soon. I do have the, I have to finish filling him in and then I have all of the flowers that go around him to work on. So I, I'm glad that I got, I'm glad I got basically the bird done. I just have a couple of little places where I have to go add like some gray, but it was definitely frustrating. And uh, I, it wasn't that I was distracted by it. It just, it was those two symbols being the exact same color made it a little bit complicated. And I kind of wished, cause I know with the PDF charts, when you order one, it comes with the color, comes printed in color, and then it comes with the symbols printed in black and white. And I feel like I would have done so much better if I would have had the black and white symbols. So, <laughs> so we'll continue on. Um, I know he's gonna look amazing when he's done. I can't wait to get him in that antique frame, but it definitely was a challenging five days. <laughs> All right, last but not least is Autumn at Hawkern Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. So this one I have been working on as my Wednesday and Thursday project. And here is my progress. So I'm absolutely loving how this is turning out. I'm so glad that Yvette and I decided to continue working on our Hawkern Hollows together because we know we will get these finished this year and I cannot wait. So in my last video, I was working on this owl block here. Uh, two changes that I did. There was supposed to be a spider that dropped down here and I decided to take the spider off because I don't like them. <laughs> and the moon was supposed to be this orange color here and I decided to stitch it with the same color that the owl is to make it more of a moon color. I don't know how well it's showing up because looking in the viewfinder, I can see the outline of it, but I don't know how well it's showing up. In person, it shows up great. Uh, so that were that was the two changes that I made. I just kind of moved one of the doodads up near to where the spider was supposed to be. Uh, and then the next block, which is the covered bridge block, I did decide to make a couple of changes in that one. That one's gonna get a lot of changes. So you can see that I started a little bit of the grass here. That is DMC 3011. Um, it was supposed to be the same color that the covered bridge is outlined in, which is sort of like a dark lime green. And I just decided I wanted my lawn to be a little bit darker just to kind of help pull in some of the darker elements that are in some of the other blocks. The other change that I decided to make, which is, so in, in the block, there are, there's a stream with some fishes that are swimming in the stream. And I have decided right here, um, I've decided to take the fish out and the stream I'm going to darken to a, I forget what the DMC number is, but I will have that in my next video. Um, I, in case I change my mind, but right now it's one of the sort of like dark country blue um, DMC colors and that's what I will do the stream in. And I've made a couple of other changes as well, 
but since I haven't got to them yet, I will show them in, uh, I will talk about them in my next video if I have gotten to where they are at. But the stream and the grass were my two first changes. I just wanted to have a little bit darker green, sort of like a, that country green um, that will help pull in some of the darker elements of my stitching. So I'm stitching this on a piece of a 40 count of vintage country mocha with various DMC one over two. I really, really love how this is turning out. I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of people who are gonna ask why I took the spider out. Number one, I don't like spiders. Number two, I'm gonna tell you guys a really quick story. So years ago, years and years ago, when I was working on my Hocus Pocusville quilt, which if you have watched my videos all the way back through to October of last year, that was the quilt that was hanging up behind me. It's the hand embroidered quilt. And there were a lot of spiders kind of all over the quilt that you stitch. And I was stitching them. I had a little bit of a head cold. And when I went to sleep that night, I must have had a fever. And I dreamt that the, the stitch spiders literally came to life and were crawling like all over the place. And they looked exactly like my stitching. They were all like hand embroidered black spiders all over the place. And ever since then, I just have really, I think once or twice I've stitched up a spider on a piece, but I usually tend to leave them off because I don't want to dream about them. I don't like them. I absolutely do not like them. I know a lot of people do, but also I'm sure that everybody has something that they, that freak them out. Okay. Spiders freak me out. So I, if I can avoid stitching them, I will. <laughs> So let's talk about framed finishes. So I do have three brand new framed finishes. Uh, one of them is um, Anne Priest, which I'm dying to show you guys. But I had two that had previously been finished. Um, I know I've shown them a time or two, maybe earlier on in my floss tube making journey, but they were in frames that I wasn't too happy with. And I knew that at some point, if I was able to, I was going to either buy a custom frame for them. Basically, I figured I was gonna, at some point, buy a custom frame for them because I didn't realize that you could frame your own stuff, that you could make your own frames, that you know any of that was even possible. So when I um, found out through Kim, watching Kim Goldman, the Contented Stitchers Floss 2 videos, and she mentioned that she was making her own frames, and I was like, you can actually do that and then you know gathering up the equipment that I would need to make the frames I knew that these two for sure were high up on the list to be reframed so the first one and this is the only one that didn't give me any trouble whatsoever is called the anniversary and it is by I don't know if it's Lila studio or Layla studio I hear it two different ways I, I no longer have this particular chart, but I'm pretty positive I stitched it on a piece of 32 count vintage country mocha Lugana with, I think the DMC that would have been listed on the chart. I don't know if the original piece was supposed to be stitched in DMC or if it was an over dyed and there was a conversion or if I made a conversion, I just do not remember. So uh, what I did was when I had the frame together, I decided I wanted it to be sort of like a colonial blue color, um, mainly to help um, the jacket on this little man show up as well as some of the blue that is in this piece. So I painted it with some folk art paint in uniform blue, and then I distressed it with some antiquing wax to kind of give it that vintage vibe. I did distress it using uh, sandpaper and I absolutely love it. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, I did stitch this for my husband and I. Uh, we were married in 1998 so we have our initials here and this particular piece will hang in our bedroom on the wall that I am sort of trying to figure out what to do with. I know this is one of the pieces that will hang there. Um, I did stitch it with two strands of thread over two linen threads. 
My next finish is Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street Sampler. So again, this was a previous finish that I had done before I had done Floss Tube, like a couple of years before I even remotely thought I would ever do a Floss Tube video. It was one of the first pieces that I did when I got back into cross stitching. Uh, I stitched it on a piece of 32 count vintage country mocha and I know that I converted it to DMC because that is all I had. I did not, I don't think at that time I knew what uh, over dyed threads were. <laughs> so I did stitch it two over two and uh, the frame has been stained in the color espresso. And this was one where the frame, the frame fit it perfectly this way, but then up and down, there was like way too much open space. I mean, it didn't look quite right. I mean, it looked fine. It looked totally fine, but I just never felt like it looked quite right. But I love how it turned out. Uh, when I was putting it into its frame, I applied too much pressure and I actually busted the seams and I had to go and take it all apart and then re-glue it. So I do have it with the hanging hardware. And then these little doodads, I got them off of Amazon and I will put a link to them down below. But I think it looks great. I love it so very much. It is now in a frame that is perfect for it. All right, so my last frame finish. So before I show it to you guys, which I'm so excited to show you, I have to tell you that making this frame was a nightmare. Uh, the cutting went fine. Uh, everything cutting, it finished at the correct size, everything. Um, but what I did was is on the, so in my last video, I showed um, Mighty Acorn. I told you guys that that particular frame was supposed to be for Anne Priest. But during the cutting process, one, uh, one side had got cut too short. And so I couldn't use that. I didn't have enough to recut that side. So we cut it down and we used it for Mighty Acorn. When I did that, um, it was, you know, it was bare wood. I assembled it into its frame, glued it, um, and took it out of the glue and then stained it. And the stain would not adhere to where the glue had been. So when I made the frame for Anne Priest, I stained it before I put the frame together and everything went really, really well until I went to go put my stitched piece in it and the frame broke. And uh, I put it back together. We sanded the edges a little bit, not really sure why this thing, you know, why it had fallen apart like that. So I went, we, I sanded it, I re-glued it, put it in its clamps, let it sit overnight, went to go put the, um, put the staples back in it and the last staple when it went in the frame broke again and I honestly thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. I was at the end of my patience. I There's just so much emotion in this piece and just to have the frame constantly be giving me trouble it just I seriously thought I was I just I was not liking it. I just, it was not fun. So went one more time, really sanded those edges down. Um, at that point, I realized that we pro I probably should not have stained it um, because when I went to go look at some of the frames that I had ordered from the Rusty Roof, I noticed that none of the angles you could tell had been painted or stained or any of that. So I realized that you're not supposed to stain them. So I buffed it out again, um, trying to remove as much of the previous glue as I could, as well as trying to get, you know, like a surface where I could get the pieces to go together. Put it into the frame, put the clamps back on it and let it set overnight. Came out, snuck up to it, <laughs> flipped it over, <laughs> put the staples in it again, Everything went well. I was like, okay, put the hardware in it and took it out, put Aunt, put Aunt Priest in it, latched it down, and it's been fine. 
I just don't look at it funny because I feel like I'm going to give it the stink eye and it's going to fall apart. Um, it was, it was definitely very frustrating. Now, the other part, when I was putting her onto the mat board with the batting and the batting, I got, you know, because when you put it on there, you, you try to, you know, you have to kind of fiddle with it to make sure that it's even around all four sides. And on the top, the side, the bottom, perfect. Coming down the one side, perfect, until you got to the one corner and it turned like this. No matter what I did, I could not get that corner to line up. I had, I had it completely laced three times and took the lacing off of it to try to adjust it. And then Brian got to looking at it and he's like, well, the, the actual linen threads are curved. So what I did was I went back in, relaced it again, got to that corner and I really pulled on it to try to get to manipulate it so that the corner would straighten out. And it finally did and everything finally came together and it was like celebration galore. So now that I've talked about all of that, <laughs> here is Anne Priest. She looks fabulous. I absolutely love her so very much. I think that the espresso stain really helps the brown on the house stand up as well as some of the other elements of the sampler. It really makes those colors pop up and I love it. Love it, love it. So she has been hanging in my room for the last couple of days. I'm so glad that she's done. I pray every time I look at it that the frame does not fall apart because I, I will have a nervous breakdown, but I love her so very much. Uh, I stitched this particular sampler for my great-grandparents, Mary Slaby and John Kirpika. Uh, Mary was a quilter, and I forgot to ask my dad if um, he had the picture of her holding me. Um, she died in 1978, and I was born in 1977, so. But I'm so glad to have it done and it looks beautiful on my wall. It matches the curtains that I picked out perfectly. <laughs> and I love it, love it, love it. So this is a piece of 40 count caramel by Seraphim Fabrics. I stitched it with the called for threads, one over two. And I love it, love it, love it. Looks so good, I love it so very much. So I'm hoping that as time goes on, the frame will hold together because I really do like this frame a lot. And it's absolutely beautiful. She did teach me a lot about framing. <laughs> so but I love it. I love it so very much. And I'm so glad to have her done and on my wall. All right, so framing questions. Um, I did get uh, quite a lot of them. And again, thank you to everybody who was so interested in, in finding out about it. So how I learned, um, well, basically that you could frame your own cross stitch pieces was I watched the Contented Stitcher, um, Kim, and she had started talking about, you know, going to the thrift store and Goodwill and buying frames and then cutting them down. And, and that's how I found out about it. I didn't even realize you could, but once I discovered that you could start making your own frames, I definitely wanted to know how to do that um, because in the long run I think it'll save me a lot of money <laughs> and you know the first three frames that I made everything went great and then the next three frames had issues and it's all a learning process and even though I almost lost my mind uh, framing Anne Priest uh, I'm still looking forward to the next batch of frames I get to make um, so um, Questions that I got, number one was, will I do a tutorial? And at this point, I don't, um, I don't feel like I have enough knowledge or confidence in, in doing that um, because I am just learning how to frame my own pieces. But when the day comes and I feel a little bit more like I know what I'm doing, I definitely would be open to doing a tutorial. First question that I got was, how do I attach the three layers of batting to my mat board? So here is a piece of mat board that is left over from a project that I finished. 
Um, you can get matte board at Michael's, which is usually where I get it. Um, I think you can also get it at Hobby Lobby, but Michael's is usually the one where I purchase it and it is back in the framing section. Matte board is about that thick. Um, you can get it in all different colors, but I usually will get it in white. Scraps of batting, I have a ton. What I do is I take my matte board and I take some of this 505 Temporary Adhesive. This is what quilters use for basting their own quilts. It is acid free. I do not use it on the quilts that I run through my quilt machine, but if I am sewing them on my sewing machine, I will use this. So I will spray some of this to the mat board. I will attach my piece of batting. I smooth it all out. I give it another spray of the adhesive and I put the next layer of batting on. I only have two layers of batting, but I basically would spray the top of this and then lay another piece of batting over the top of it. The only thing I do not spray is I do not spray the top piece of batting because I do not want my cross stitch piece to stick down to it. I wanna be able to adjust it. So that is how I do that. So once I have it all on there, I will flip it over and I will cut the batting off so that way the batting is the same um, width as my mat board. Then it's ready for your cross stitch piece and the lacing. Uh, another question I got was will I show what my laced piece looks like and I actually forgot to, I should have left um, this one out so I could have showed you but now that it's all nice in there I don't want to disturb it in the frame. So instead I will uh, put in a picture. I had sent this picture a while ago to Yvette. So I knew I had a picture of something that I had laced and I will insert that picture right here or right around here. When I am lacing my cross stitch pieces, I will use Aunt Lydia's crochet thread. Um, I picked this up at Michael's but I also have bought it at Joann's and Hobby Lobby and have seen it online on Amazon. And it is usually two to three dollars. And one of these will last a really long time. Uh, another question that I got was, do I frame any of my pieces with glass? And I do not usually. Um, however, my Anniversaries of the Heart and Queen of Freedom is framed behind museum glass because my hope is that both of those pieces will uh, be a legacy that will be passed down for generations. I hope everything else that I make will be as well, but those are two pieces that I definitely want to make sure have the best chance of making it for as long as they possibly can. <laughs> my next question was about what tools I use for framing. And I thought the best way to do this would be to insert a picture of what the tools look like, unless I have them right here. So the first thing is I have a cobalt single bevel miter saw that has a seven and one fourth inch blade. And I will put a picture of it here. I believe you can get it from Lowe's. I received it for my birthday from my dad and Carol. Uh, the next is I have an Aero Pneumatic Stapler. Now you don't necessarily need to have a stapler, but I feel like it adds an extra layer of um, holding your frame together. You can get handheld ones, but Brian thought it would be better if I had a, a like a staple gun. Uh, because I do have a staple gun, I also have a stealth two gallon compressor and both the pneumatic stapler and the compressor I did purchase from Amazon using a gift card. I also have this. This is called a PowerTech. It doesn't really have a name. I mean, it has like a bunch of names and I will put a link to it down below because my husband did get it on Amazon, but this is what holds my frame together. Um, there are various types of things to hold your frames together, um, different types of clamps and, and things like this, but this one has, you loosen up this and then you pull it and it's got the four corners and then you attach those four corners to your frame and you cinch it down and it keeps your corners you know, together while they are gluing. So that is what mine looks like, but there are so many that you can 
get online, so many that I have seen. Um, I just know that that particular one came from Amazon and I will put a link to it down below. Uh, the type of glue that I use is Titan Bond original wood glue. I got this from Lowe's and this one, it does dry fairly quickly, um, but for best results, you should leave it overnight and not rush because when you do that, your frame breaks. <laughs> uh, so that one was purchased at Amazon. And then I do have a little hand sander that my husband also got me and I will put, if I can find it, I will put a link to it down below. I didn't grab it because um, it's dirty. I mean, it's got paint and, and things. I've been using it. So it's, it's you know, look, it, it's nothing's wrong with it. It just doesn't look the best. <laughs> so I will put a picture of it and then put a link because I'm pretty sure he got it from Amazon as well. Um, other than that, I just use my husband's drill um, to, you know, drill anything with screws or, or, or like the hanging um, because I did get um, these hangers from Amazon and then you do need to put it in with a screwdriver so I used his drill and the same with these that hold the frame in they are attached with screws as well so I used his drill for that um, a screwdriver flathead screwdriver and then whatever paint and paint brushes and things like that you want to use that is what that is what I use um, if you have any questions you know please let me know the question I got was about the frame molding so this is the only piece of frame molding that I have left this is the one that I used for Anne Priest and Mighty Acorn there is actually enough here that I could probably do a small frame. I purchased this from the Home Depot and when I bought it, it was a few dollars cheaper, but like everything else, it's a few dollars more expensive now. Um, so when I checked today, an eight foot segment of this is $15.34 on Amazon. This is what the back looks like. It does have the quarter of an inch cut out for your framing. And this is a softer wood, so you have to be a little bit careful with it. Um, the other pieces of molding that I have, I have used it all and I do not have it to show. But I did purchase them all from the Home Depot and I will put a link to the ones that I used down below. Last two questions. Uh, the first one is why do I prefer lacing to pinning? So I did watch a tutorial uh, when I was trying to learn how to you know, frame my own cross stitch before I started making my own frames. I mean, this was before, before. Um, I did watch a couple of tutorials because I was trying to find alternate ways of finishing my cross stitch pieces. And I did watch a tutorial on lacing and I watched another one on pinning. And for me, lacing just seemed more natural to me. Um, I don't think there's a right and a wrong way to do it. You just got to do whatever kind of, you know, whatever you enjoy doing. And for me, the lacing, um, I think my quilter's brain understood it a little bit more. Uh, and then the last question that I got is about how I cut my mat board. So I have this rotary cutter. It's made by Kai Cut. Uh, I do not know if it is still available. I actually um, dumpster dived for this. Um, my mom was throwing out a bunch of stuff and I actually dumpster dive for a whole bunch of stuff um, and this was one of them. Um, I think at one point um, she was going to make her own mats and she had purchased this and then it just sat and sat and sat and sat and sat and then um, at one point she decided to throw it out. I recognized it and I rescued it and it sat here for a while until finally I started cutting my own mat board and then it worked perfectly. At some point, I would like to get um, a guillotine cutter, but um, for right now, this works perfectly. All right, so as far as all the cross-stitching goes, that is all I have to show for this video. I do have some happy mail that I received over the past four weeks because in my last video, I ran out of time and I was not able to show it and talk about it. I also do have a package that I received from the Fat Quarter Shop. So if you're not interested in seeing any of that or the quilts, which I will show, or the quilting, I should say, after, um, this is a great stopping off point and I will be back in two weeks. And thank you so much for stopping by today. If you would like to fast forward through this part to the quilting, I will put a timestamp right here.
All right, so let's start off with the Fat Quarter Shop. So they had mailed me a package like the day before my last video, and unfortunately I ran out of time and was not able to show what they had sent. So these are new items that are available now at the Fat Quarter Shop, and I will put a link to the Fat Quarter Shop down below. So the first item that they sent me is a cross-stitch chart by Lori Holt. This is her um, stitch card set L very cute i remember when the quilt blocks for these uh, first released <laughs> uh, a quilt pattern that is designed by sarah price of it's so emma called away we go which this would be perfect as a baby quilt uh, the next one is also by it's so emma designed by crystal stall and it is called poinsettia Beautiful, beautiful Christmas one. Uh, another quilt pattern by It's So Emma. Um, the designer is Angelis Tucker and it's called Rockin' Around. So this one would be perfect as, you know, if you decorated in modern decor, this Christmas tree would be perfect. And then a cross stitch pattern by It's So Emma called Bloom Where You're Planted. And it is so perfect for this time of year with the spring rains and not snow like a lot of people have been getting, but so absolutely perfect for spring. Love it. And then I was so excited to see this in the box. I have wanted one of these since they first came out. They've been out for a while and I always missed when they came out because they would sell out like hotcakes. And so when I saw this in the box, I squealed out loud. I was so excited. Um, it is the Daisy Bees Knees book stand and it is a magnetic book stand. And I use a small wooden book stand. Um, I set it next to my sewing machine and it always has whatever project I'm worked on, working on propped up on it. And it's, I love it, it's invaluable. But when I saw that this was in there, I just was really, really excited. It's way bigger than my small wooden one. And it's absolutely perfect. It is magnetic, so I will be able to use my magnets to, you know, put my, if I'm working on a, you know, quilt that's got like a, you know, single pages, I'll be able to, you know, stick it on there as well as cross stitching. If I'm finding I'm struggling and I need a little help, um, this is perfect. So it does have a little stand in the back. It's got this great lip. Oh, absolutely perfect. I'm so, so excited. And I will use this every single day. So wonderful. So I will put a link to um, the Fat Quarter Shop's uh, shop down below. If you are interested in any of these items, they are available now at the Fat Quarter Shop. And thank you so very much to the Fat Quarter Shop for sending me the package. And at some point I will be offering some of these as giveaways. So look for that in a future video. All right, so a couple weeks ago, I received a package from Linda and she had sent me a message and said that she had an extra uh, Teresa Koget chart, Let It Rain, and she wanted to send it to me, which was so absolutely generous of her. She also sent me a few extra things, which was absolutely so incredibly sweet and kind and generous. Um, here is the card that she sent me. And here is the Let Love Rain chart by Teresa Koget. This particular chart was one of my top five that I loved from Marcus. So I'm so absolutely excited to have it. I love the color so much. I definitely am really loving those earth toned colors. And this sampler, when I first saw it, it definitely spoke to me. And at some point I would love to stitch it up. I mean, I definitely know I will stitch it up, not that at some point I would love to. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, and then she included some extras, and this is by Blackbird Designs and Nicoletta Ferranto. I'm pretty sure I got that wrong, and it's called My Heart is True. And it's full of all of these sweet little cross-stitch uh, projects. I cannot wait. These are Some of these are going to look really great in the trench bowl, and other projects will look great in other like this beautiful little door hanger. I absolutely love it. I'm pretty positive this uh, particular chart is out of print. So I just was just so thankful that she sent it to me and I cannot wait to stitch up some of those inside. 
Um, she also included Merry Christmas by Blackbird Designs. I absolutely love this one, so I cannot wait to stitch it also. So very sweet. And then she sent me a piece of a 36 count dirty teacup by Needle and Flax. And I cannot wait to find the perfect project to stitch on this. So gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So thank you so very much, Linda. So a couple of videos back, I asked you guys what it is that you like to stuff your smalls with. I've been stuffing mine with polyester fiber fill, but I have been hearing from a lot of people who um, they use lizard litter or walnut, walnut shells or sawdust and various other things as well. And so I asked, you know, what are some of the things you guys like to use and where do you source it from? And I had a lot of great responses. And a couple of days after that video, Rosalie, who I have been following on Instagram for a long time, she sent me a message and said she had some sawdust she wanted to send me. And I was very excited. And it arrived a couple of weeks ago. This is the beautiful card that she made me. Absolutely gorgeous. And she sent me some wood uh, sawdust, wood shavings uh, that her husband, because he does woodworking, um, she collects all of the wood shavings. And so she sent me a bag of them. Well, she actually sent me two fabulous bags of them. They smell amazing. And she also sent me some walnut shells. So I will be attempting to make my first small for the trench bowl using the walnut walnut shells, I keep calling them crystals, walnut shells and sawdust. And I can't wait. Um, she just told me to make sure I just keep stuffing, 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 and then stuff a little bit more. So I do have a small that I will be um, attempting it on. So hopefully the next time we meet, I will have that done because it's the perfect little small. And I've had it done for a while for spring and it's going in the trench bowl. So um, thank you so much, Rosalie. She just finished Rachel Howell, which is one of the ones that I have had kitted for a couple of years and I'm dying to start it after seeing hers. I mean, I already knew it was beautiful because I had saw Yvette's and I've seen it pop up on Instagram, but then seeing it again finished in the beautiful frame that she picked out for it, just, I just wanted to stop everything I was doing and go grab it. <laughs> And then I received a very wonderful package from Megan, who is a brand new subscriber. She just happened to find me and she's been, been watching some of my older videos and she had a package that she wanted to send me. Um, she made this beautiful card and the envelope has a wax seal on it, which is just so absolutely cool. I love wax seals. I remember used to go to the stationery shop in the mall and they had all of the beautiful stationery and then they had the little section that had all the wax stamps and the melts. And um, I, I wrote her and I told her that when I was a kid, I wanted so badly when I got older to buy a set and then whenever I sent a letter or anything, I would stamp it with my wax seal. But of course, um, after I got out of high school, that's when the internet was a thing. And so um, sending letters and things like that became less and less frequent. And But I've always thought if I were to ever send letters or anything like that, it would be fun to have a wax seal. And um, it just really tickled me when I saw that um, she had attached one. So, um, but she sent me Behold the Bee by Chessie and Me, the perfect summer stitch. She also sent me some uh, primitive uh, style um, charm squares. And she sent me this beautiful, um, it, I believe it's linen, um, but it's this stamped linen that has this beautiful uh, woodland, all these little woodland animals. And at first I was thinking it would make the perfect um, quilt backing, but now I'm thinking it might um, look really good as uh, fall pillows and things like that. So it's absolutely gorgeous. Abs I really love it. So thank you so very much, Megan. It was so sweet of you to think of me. It was so sweet of all of you guys to think of me, to send me all of that wonderful happy mail. So thank you so very much. And also it's totally unnecessary, but thank you so very much. So let's talk about quilts. I grabbed the Fredster because he hasn't been in a video in a while. Of course, he won't sit still. But when the camera's off, he totally is Mr. You know, snuggly. 
So, <laughs> you're so cute. Anyway, I thought I would show him. He's so absolutely adorable. I love him. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about quilts. Now, the quilt hanging behind me is brand new. Um, I showed it in my last video. I had finished the quilt top. And then this past week on Tuesday, I believe, Monday or Tuesday, I was able to go out and quilt it. Um, I just did a simple stipple on it. Uh, I did not want to do anything that was too busy because the quilt itself is, you know, busy. Uh, but I absolutely love these, this style of a sampler quilt where everything, you know, you've got different sizes of blocks and everything is put together. It reminds me so much of my long time gone quilt and also my red sampler quilt. And I absolutely love this style of quilt so very much. I'm so happy to have it done. It was so much fun to put together. Um, the quilt is called the Temecula Quilt Album and it is by Temecula Quilt Company. I do not know if the pattern is still available. You could try contacting her and asking her, but it was a block of the month from several years ago. And I do, the funny thing is, I do remember when it came out as a block of the month and I remember looking at it and really liking it and I, I procrastinated and I ended up losing out on it. And I remember all that next year, every time I went to go print off a recipe, when you print it off from online, sometimes it'll print ads. And this was always the ad, it was always taunting me. So to have it as my own now, I just absolutely love it. Uh, the, the backing on the quilt I picked up from uh, thousands of bolts. It is uh, a blue fabric. And when I take it off the wall, if I think about it, I will show what the backing is. So once I had my Temecula album quilt top finished, it was time to get back to working on some of my other projects. The first project is Block Bonanza. So this is a block of the month that I am doing through Homestead Hearth, and I will put a link to their website down below. When I finished the Temecula album quilt, I had the current, of the block bonanza so I had the current block of the month and then I was behind two months so I went with the oldest one first and here is this one so each month comes with four blocks that you make so this was one of them and this one here it took forever <laughs> uh, there's this one which I really really like this one a lot this one here, which was a lot of fun to put together, and this one. So I was able to get those four done, and the plan is to continue working on it until I get it caught up. I don't think I will be able to get it caught up by the end of the month, but I definitely would like to only have the current month that I'm working on after May. So I'm hoping to um, get the next two months, so there's eight blocks, I'm hoping to get all of those done before the end of May, so that way I am current. <laughs> okay, so my last project, which I was so excited to start this one, is the Civil War tribute quilt. So this was a block of the month back in 2009, 2010. It was my unicorn uh, quilt. I never ever in a million years thought I would ever see it again. It was one of those situations where I woulda, coulda, shoulda, didn't, and I totally missed out. And I, I honestly never ever 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 thought that I would ever have the block of the month. Um, I never, I just never ever thought it. And then I was so generously gifted it by Regina. And I, I have been waiting to start it ever since it came. But of course I had to finish some other projects first. And now that those projects are done, I was like, I'm starting it. So on April 12th, was the 161st anniversary of the first shots being fired at Fort Sumpner. And the very first block of the month is shots fired at Fort Sumpner. So I, on the 12th of April, sat down and I assembled the block. So here is the 12 inch block. And I absolutely love working with these fabrics. They're so stinking gorgeous. 
and this is the 18 inch it's so fabulous oh my gosh so i cannot wait to get to the second month i'm going to try i don't know if i'm going to be able to work on it between now and the end of the month but i definitely have plans to work on the second month in may um, if i'm able to i would like to be able to at least get two months worth of blocks done each month um, i don't know if that's going to happen or not because some months have more blocks than others I've had a lot of you guys reach out to me to tell me to check out the corrections page and I have so I have them jotted down so I know which months to go in and look at and make sure I'm getting the correct information uh, the second month's block I do not have it it's all out in my dungeon or I would have showed it to you but I have to make four of them and I can't wait to get back to it I am so I'm just having it and putting it together is so surreal for me because I remember every every step inside that quilt shop when I first saw it I remember talking to the quilt store owner and her telling me they have it as a block of the month and they had spots available and I remember saying I was going to think about it and hesitating and thinking well when I come back in six months for the next um, block hop or shop hop um, I was going to pick up some of the fabric then I was going to save up for it and it was too little too late even though the block of the month was still going on there were no spots available there was no fabric available there were no kits no pre cuts none of that it was just totally done <laughs> the life lesson if you see a quilt that you absolutely are in love with with the fabric too you should get it because fabric lines go out of print all the time and so do fabric pattern or quilting patterns so I've had a lot of you guys send me messages asking if you know if the pattern is still available uh, where can you get it and I honestly do not know if it is still available you could try contacting Homestead Hearth they were the ones that designed the quilt and designed the block of the month but I do not know because it has, it was a block of the month in 2009 and 2010. So I, I don't know, occasionally on the secondary market, a kit pops up, but because it is out of print, it has inflated prices. <laughs> so you could keep your eye open and see if maybe one does pop up or try contacting Homestead Hearth and seeing if it's something that they still have available. I don't know. Um, it's a beautiful quilt pattern and um, I, again, it's so surreal to have it again. It just definitely, I remember every moment of seeing it in the shop and I remember walking away from it and I remember regretting it and being too shy to call up and find out if I could still join and <sighs> woulda, coulda, shoulda, didn't and regretted it. So anyway. Well guys, that is all I have to show and share in this video. If you've stuck around for this long, I really do appreciate it so very much. I really do appreciate everybody who stops by, who takes the time to watch my videos. I appreciate it more than you can possibly know. Um, so I plan to be back in two weeks. It will be May, which is crazy to think it's gonna be May when I come back. Uh, my plans for cross stitching will be to continue working on my Autumn Hawk Run Hollow, deciding if I want to work on Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain or not. So I will either have that to show or I won't. I will also work on Ann Thomas. Because I have finished The Winter Is Past, I will be starting something new, but it won't be for a couple of weeks. So I will have all of that to show in my next video. Um, if you would like to see up what I if you would like to see what I am up to in between my videos, you can follow me on Instagram. I am Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, or I do have a Facebook page, which is called Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. And I will put a link to both of those down below, as well as how you can get in contact with me if you need to. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And I will either answer them directly, or if you would rather, um, I an or if I feel like it's something I should probably answer in a video, I will do that as well. So thank you so much for stopping by today. Hope you have a great two weeks. Bye-bye.